Hello, everybody. Long Don here in Minneapolis. Tristan, Southern California. Christine in Austin. We're very excited today. Tristan, now, you know, you, people know who you are already. So should we uh, throw it back to Christine, let her introduce herself? Because she probably do way better than I can. <laughs> yeah, let her do it, damn it. <laughs> no problem. Hi, I'm Christine Haas. I'm grateful to be here. I am a former news anchor and investigative reporter. Um, I met these guys uh, a few years ago after starting my PR and video uh, branding company. And uh, I'm grateful to be here. Tristan, you had me on um, for your lab coat agents uh, web webinar, I guess it's been about a week and a half ago. And we yeah. talked about some our tips and that type of thing and we got lots of good questions and I have some new information specific to Realtors today so I'm grateful to be here thanks for having me we're excited to have you and let's just get right to it long and Mike out of Minnesota right long I actually forgot where you were for a second so you saw that pause right I was like uh, Minnesota <laughs> And you're the one wearing the hat. You're in Southern California and you're wearing a hat. How This does not make sense. Oh, that was terrible. I'm like, uh, Minnesota? Uh, anyways, you guys hired Christine yeah. for your PR. And then all of a sudden, I got to see you on, on television, dude. So uh, tell yeah. me about that experience. I think it was like within maybe six weeks to eight weeks, we were on uh, the news like four or five times. Christine even got me to go out to New York to be on a CBS new in New York. <laughs> that's you know, awesome. Time. Uh, so yeah, it was awesome. We, uh, you know, that's why I'm excited for to just share with you guys our success and then have Christine go into more detail, uh, you know, because we're in the people business, right? So visibility is credibility. So the more people see us, the more that they, they know that we are the experts and then they look to us for uh, working with us. That's very true. I love what you, what you said, because you've said that before, visibility is credibility. And I mean, so many influencers and mega producers and entrepreneurs would agree with you on that. That's why they spend so much money on branding and on being seen through PR. So Christine, the last time we were on, we kind of went through the basics of how to reach out to media companies and whether it's, it's you writing or a blog or in their articles, which I actually did. I reached out to Entrepreneur. Good. Right. I was like, oh, this is cool. It looks hard, actually. I was like, oh, this is uh, not easy. <laughs> <laughs> so as a guest, as a guest writer, which is cool. Yes. Uh, and then you also mentioned some amazing tools last time. If anybody's tuning in right now, uh, just watch on our uh, YouTube page. You can find the, the, the webinar that we did about a week and a half ago. But let's talk about what you have now because you created the, something specific for us, for real estate agents. Yeah, well, I've, I've really felt, as we mentioned in the last webinar, that there are a lot of people who want to start the media ball rolling, so to speak. And they struggle because they go to a PR firm and they find out, well, I should preface this, my, my fees are not $10,000 a month, but there are PR companies out there many times where you go and their retainer is a minimum of eight ten thousand dollars $10,000 a month, and people just simply can't afford that. And so as a former journalist and as uh, also a digital marketer and being involved in so much of the digital marketing aspect of it, I see the power of what the media can do. And I also know that it's not rocket science. Um, I'd like to brag and say that I'm so smart and the reason why Long and Mike got all those uh, connections was because of I, my superpowers, but it's really not. It's <laughs> because of the fact that I knew how to pitch their story and how to position them properly and it made it very easy for them to get on the news and then it will make that very easy for them to carry on and do it on their own. So in a nutshell, when you, when you said I did something specific for real estate agents, what I've done is put together a course that has allowed you to know the inside steps of how to get media yourself, how to write a pitch, how to approach the right person, um, whether you should be on podcast or guest posting or TV all of those things. And what I wanted to do is make it tangible for people who might be just starting out or thinking I would really like to do that, but I can't afford it. And really it's just knowledge of how to access the right people, where to go to find the contact information and how to put your best story out there. I love that. All right. So can you share with us some of the things that are in there specifically that are going to help us out? 
Yes. Um, so really it's about like understanding guest posting. Um, as you mentioned, entrepreneur, you went to try to see if you could do that. Um, there are so many different outlets out there, blogs, high profile blogs, guest posting on like Thrive Global, um, even Huffington Post, those places you can contribute for free. So you just have to find out the best way to position your own story, what to write, where to go for the submission guidelines, and then that's where you can really get out there immediately. So imagine if your guest post is you know, accepted on Entrepreneur. That's something that you can put out on social media. You can put it out on Facebook. I was just featured on Entrepreneur. You don't have to say I'm a guest poster. You just say I was just featured on Entrepreneur or yep. you know, Thrive uh, Global. Whatever it might be, it gives you the ability to do that. And there's such easy steps. I just really put it together for you to figure out how to approach those places. Podcasts as well. Like who is the best person for you to contact for a podcast. Obviously, you want your demographic to line up. Um, so for a realtor, there are specific podcasts that you wanna go to, as opposed to going to something that might be off the mark for your demographic. And then at the end of the day, the overall goal is make sure you're talking to the right ideal uh, follower or customer. Certainly you wanna educate through your media component. So whatever you throw out there, whether it's a guest post on TV, whatever it is, you wanna add value just like in digital marketing. But at the same time, you want to, as Long said, improve your credibility. So when you are able to do that and get featured in the media, it, there's a trust factor and perception is everything as Long mentioned. And so that's what my goal is, is to help people realize where's the best place to go? How do I submit it? How do I pitch it? And then what to do with it after you get it. So uh, following that same thing, what if some of the agent or uh, whoever might be using you or working with you said, you know what? I'm kind of your normal, boring day to day. I have no unique story about myself to get out there. I mean, how, how do you help them create something? Yes. And, you know, I really dig in. As I spoke with you initially, when we first started working together, I wanted to know more about your background. And for those folks that have not heard Long's background, I know, um, Tristan, you interviewed him recently. You've got a remarkable background just from childhood and how you persevered through some tough times. And I love that story. But not everybody has that story. So I would say to someone, okay, so what is it that your goal really is? Are you building a, you know, your brokerage in your state? Um, what is it specifically that you're after? And what I do is I look for trending headlines. And this is what I coach people in the PR um, and Media Academy uh, course. It's look for trending uh, headlines that are pertaining to your subject matter. So for example, if you're in Charleston, North Carolina, and there's a you know housing report that's coming out. And I always offer this up. This is really easy, tangible information that's going to hit the news anyway, because everybody wants to know whether the market's up or whether the market's down. So you can get into that conversation because typically, especially in a medium-sized market, a reporter is handed that story in the morning meeting and said, now go do a local angle on this. Let's see what's really happening in this. And then if you already know that that's out there or it's coming, you can pitch that to a reporter and say, I'm here, I have been in business for five, 10 years or whatever it might be. And I saw the late, latest housing numbers. I know you're gonna be doing a story on it. I know you're also gonna to wanna to feature somebody who's looking for a house or just purchased a house, depending what those numbers would be. So you wanna line up, if you're pitching a reporter, all of those elements, you wanna line up yourself as the expert to speak about those housing numbers and you want to tell the reporter and you're making their job easy this is the end of the day is what your goal is make their job easy you're going to give them a person who's been looking for a house or just bought a house and b-roll and so I, I used to laugh you know being in tv before i would call somebody i'd be super excited they're okay good they're on deadline i've got somebody ready to go and then they'd text me or call me back and say wait is this on camera <laughs> Yeah, TV on <laughs> camera, you know, yeah, that it, it is. You're going to have to be, oh, I didn't know there was going to be a camera. I'm like, how do you not know? But at the end of the day, you got to be reminded that you need B-roll. TV needs B-roll. They need video. So if you have a house that you'd want to profile as well, um, that's where you have the setting of the interview, have them come out to a house that's open. And then also on a backdoor kind of component of that, that could be good advertising for that house that's for sale. So all of these ingredients are things that you think of 
as you're pitching the story to the reporter. And that makes their job so much easier. And you're golden. Something that you said last time that then you repeated now was the story. Yeah. And so can you help out those agents that are listening in on how is it that we that we create our story? Where do we start so that we can start thinking more along those lines so we can pitch ourselves and create a brand along those lines? You have to really, I mean, that's really stepping back to the 3000 foot view. What is your brand? What are you trying to accomplish? Who do you want to be seen? If you want to be the downtown condo person and you're selling condos like crazy in your community. So Austin 78701 was just ranked the number one most expensive zip code in the city of tech or in the state of Texas. So because of that, if you're selling condos in downtown or anything, you know, maybe it's even commercial real estate in downtown Austin, there's going to be some pushback about like, okay, is this good news or bad news? And if you put yourself on camera, you're going to have to answer to how can people afford to live? So that's why I say when you get, you got to take that umbrella view, like, like what is your goal? Do you want to be seen as the downtown person or do you want to niche down and say, I want to be seen as the person that most of the people who are transient and moving here uh, want, you know, come to, or I want to be seen as the person who is helping retirees, you know, get into condos downtown because they're empty nesters. Or I want to be seen as the person who helps millennials get into new homes because the interest rates have lowered. Whatever it might be, you've got to figure that before you go to the media because that's how you position the story. So to find your story, that's what you got to zoom in on. What do you want to be known on? So that's where you also have to think about, okay, if I want to be seen as the person who helps empty nesters get into some really lucrative real estate in downtown Austin, mm -hmm. the person we profile should be somebody of that demographic. So I'm going to look for somebody who's, you know, 45, 50 years old, who's deciding he and his wife are going to be moving into a condo downtown. That's who you want to profile because that's where the brand is going to come out. So you want everything to be consistent. Um, if your story is really about how you are the underdog and you're taking over the city of whatever, Miami or whatever, and you're growing by leaps and bounds and your brokerage is blowing up because you have a specific um, ideal in your, your brokerage that's different, because I know how competitive that can be. I've learned so much from you guys. So if you want to just talk, you know, say, I want to push my brokerage. I don't want to push myself. I want to push my team. I want to push this as an opportunity. That's a different story. So you think about that. Okay, so what would be consistent news-wise for you in that regard? Okay, real realtors, we know that so many of them struggle because they don't completely commit. So you look at the income ratio, 80-20 is typical, right? But which um, platform, like lab code agents, like what do you offer that's different than your competitors out there? And why is it better for a realtor to be with you as opposed to your competitor out there? So that's a different story. And that's more about, okay, we are seeing an increase in income in realtors in this city. And the reason why is because they're all really latching onto a new platform. And that happens to be your brokerage. And then I know when we worked together long, you were trying to figure out ways to reach brokers in or realtors and brokers in other communities in the state of Texas, I'm sorry, in the state of Minnesota, because you were trying to grow your brokerage there. And so you said, you know, there's some in areas like way upstate that I want to reach eventually because I want to get them on camera. So that's a, a, something that you want to think about. You, where, do, where is the media most impressive for your growth? That makes a lot of sense. All right. So let's say we decide to go with media that's more on the print side, right? And we talked a little bit about this. Um, where would we start and how does your course help with that? Sure. And that's something that I specifically uh, put together for you guys um, because you've been so kind to me and have me on this this webinar consistently, I put together a list of direct emails and contact information to the top 25 real estate media outlets right now in print um, and TV as well. But when you ask like, how do we really maximize print? You've got to know who to contact. 
So there, I've seen some competitors out there who have programs out there about how to reach the right PR person, or I should say the right writer or reporter. And when I look at the websites they give, it's like, okay, here's the website, USA Today, good luck. I'm actually giving you a list of specific producers and writers in the top 25 real estate media outlets with direct emails to those people. So that way you know this is the person I need to contact as opposed to just you know doing the submission form and flying into the abyss of media. It is really hard um, to find a way to get positioned unless you have that. Um, another place that is really good for print, we talked about this in the last webinar, is Harrow, Help a Reporter Out. And That's so you, the one. I was trying to remember the name. That's yeah. the one. It's a really good website. Um, and every day, if you get on their email list, as I mentioned, every day, actually twice a day in the morning and the afternoon, they send out an email. And that email lists all of the, the different types of media requests and that's every demographic but typically there's quite a bit that will transfer over to real estate or financial brokers or that type of thing so you look for that now they don't give those instant email contacts that i'm providing in my course to you guys okay. but they do give an anonymous thing and it'll say the deadline and so you submit it through help a reporter out and then that submission goes right to the reporter or the writer who's doing that story and then they look at it and see if you should be quoted or, or fill you know fill the paragraph that they're looking for in some cases it's new york times i mean they have some big hitters on that list Sometimes it's blogs, but that's okay. You want to be featured in a blog too. And if you can answer the question, you can get quoted and you can push, push that out as well. So that's a good resource, but specific emails and contact information, I'm going to be putting that in for anybody who purchases the course off of this webinar. So, so one thing I like about, so there's two types of people. I, I think I talked to you about this person, right? Like the do it yourself and the do it for me, right? Yeah. I'm one of those who will do it for me because do it myself, I might do very good. One thing I like about Christine, when we work with her, she also kind of know, okay, this is who you're going to be talking to. Here's your target audience. So these are the kind of questions they're probably going to ask you. So we actually, when I went to New York, she actually gave me four or five questions she thinks that the producer is going to ask on TV. And we actually rehearsed the answer. Do you remember that? So, uh, you know, uh, I would say, you know, uh, uh, you know, 12% or something of people went in foreclosure in a certain market. She go, no, make it sound like one of every eight. So there's certain things that we do. What's some mistakes that people could make that if they don't work with you that an agent would make uh, potentially uh, trying to do their PR and then make mistakes on? Sure, sure. Well, something, and thank you for bringing that up. Um, and I do touch on some of that in the course itself, but yes, it is always helpful when I get to work one-on-one -on -one with my clients. Um, you, I guess, you're so well-spoken and you did such a great job in those interviews that you had in Minneapolis, but that's when the reporter came out to you. When you flew out to New York, you were live on a morning show. So you were given basically rapid questions from the, the host asking like real estate trends. And in this case, we were doing a recap of a year to year nationwide look. And so the thing that I want to impress upon you as you were preparing, number one, was the fact that you had to keep your sound bite short and number two, we wanted you to answer the question in a way that you were able to tap into your own credibility. So for example, you're flying out to New York and that's so great, but it's in New York and it's national exposure, but you really wanted to be able to be seen as a thought leader nationwide, but also to know, be known for what you've done in Minnesota. So what I coached you to do is to really answer the question and say, in my experience, in building my brokerage in Minnesota, where the fastest growing the state, Right now, I have seen this trend play out, and then you answer the question from a national perspective as well. So you were able to balance both of those so well and in a short amount of time. One thing that I think surprised you, and I remember Mike and I, and you on the phone, we were trying to figure out like, okay, how do we keep that short? And so what I, I do with my clients is I time you and we rehearse it and say, okay, you just hit the 20 second mark. We wanna be 15 to 20 seconds. And you'll, I would imagine firsthand, what was it like when you were there? Didn't it fly by? Oh yeah, before you know it, you warned me, before you know it was gone. I'll just tell you right now, if Tristan or Mike was on there, they go over 20 seconds for sure. Those <laughs> guys, those guys. I wouldn't have stopped talking. <laughs> Wait, I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna see if I can share that clip. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think I have it. 
It I was, saved it, it earlier great. for yeah. this purpose alone. <laughs> Let's see if I can find it. I think I got it here. All right, guys, tell me if you can see my screen. Yep, we can see it. A lot has changed since then. Real estate expert Long Doan joins us this morning with more. Good morning. Good morning, Thank Cindy. Good morning, Andrea. Mm -hmm. Now, before we look back, let's look at the market right now in New York in this area, what it's looking like right now. Yeah, New York, just like most uh, part of the country, have recovered nicely. Uh, the average foreclosure rate in the country historically is about 0.05%. That's one in every 2,000 homes that foreclosed typically. Did you have to do homework for that? Oh, yes, he did. Oh, you're <laughs> muted, Long. You're muted. Yes, okay. remember I shared with you that uh, this is why she said don't say 0 0.505%, say oh. one in 2,000. Two yes. All right, let me listen in there. Well, no, no, this is good. You're on CBS, dude. Yeah. I know. Uh, but during the crisis, you know, some part of the country, like Florida, was 12%. Uh, That's one in every eight homes in the neighborhood for being foreclosed. Or well, New York and New Jersey have recovered, just like the most part of the country, uh, back to median home prices where it was prior to the crash. However, there's a phenomenon here in New York and New Jersey is that uh, 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 these are judicial foreclosure state, which means you have to file with the state to go through the foreclosure process. And right after the foreclosure crash, uh, robo-signing uh, came around, and that's when you guys might remember that. There's the B-roll that you're talking about, Christine. Yeah. Well, and, and the good news is, is that typically if you do a morning show interview like that, the producer will pull some file footage. So that is basically just anything that they had that they could pull up. But the B-roll that we're talking about specifically that can be really helpful to a realtor in the future if they've got the reporter coming out is like we had with Long. Um, so if he has some reporter coming out, he could have that story shot either in his office for his branding purposes or at the home of a very nice home that you're trying to market um, or fills the demographic of whatever topic you're talking about. If you're talking about millennials who are, you know, really buying more homes on a consistent basis because they have better down payments, you might want to do it in that price range to match up to whatever the story might be. But, but it is a great opportunity for you to get to the reporter to market a house that you have on the market. So, so that whole thing, literally, so Christine had fed them the questions. So when they asked, oh, I read it almost I like did, new did, did practice. Yeah. It also, that was pretty awesome. I came on there, and she made me look like a rock star. <laughs> you know, um, instead of saying one in every 12, 12 or whatever, she's, you know, it, she said, you know, one of every, how many home. So those are little things she helped me tweak that, that made me sound really good. But oh, you, that makes sense. You, he didn't even seem nervous at all. He did such a great job. You really nailed it. I have to tell a quick funny story. I have another client um, that was starting a company in New York and he had never been on camera before and he only wanted New York City and it was a startup and I thought, oh my gosh, it's going to be really hard to get this gentleman on TV first out the gate. He's never been on camera. It's a new company and Fortunately, uh, God shined down on me and said, yes, it, we had an opening for him to get on in New York. And I'll never forget, he calls me and we were doing the rehearsal just like I did with Long and about 10, 10 minutes before he's about to go on and it's like, you know, 5 a.m. wherever I'm at and he's in, in New York on the morning show. I cannot do this, Christine. There is no way I can do this. He's on the phone with me. I said, you absolutely can. It's going to be okay. And I said, let's practice. No, no, no. It's just, I can't. And he was having like a panic attack. Oh, and so whoa. I'm like telling him it's going to be okay. He's like, this is, this is a big station. And I mean, that's why I give Long so much credit. Like, this is big. When you get to New York, the lights are everywhere. You see all the major anchors on the wall. You're like, okay, I don't know if I can do this. So this gentleman does go, I'm watching live as he goes on camera. He did a great job. He gets off and he's like, I will never do that again. <laughs> wow. Really? He's like, I've got my number two person who will do all media in the future. I, that was terrifying. I said, but you did so good. And he's like, by the grace of God, you know? So it, it, it's good for some people. Some people are like, I don't want to ever do that again. And then they put their team member on there. So I give Lon credit. I mean, that was, that was a big deal. And he did so well. Thank you. That's the best. Well, dude, you did, you did do really well. You were very smooth. And uh, good job on that. So what's the process of getting somebody on television? Because that's a whole different process, right? Yes, it, it really can. Well, it's all similar. It's just who you're pitching. So for example, in the list of contacts, the direct contacts, in my course, I have 
even not just for real estate, I already have an existing list for, you know, InStyle Magazine, um, USA Today, direct contacts for those editors. But for TV, I have the bookers email address for Fox, the Today Show, all of those. So you can directly pitch them. The process is just the same where you write the pitch, but you want to find a trending story that you can find yourself as an expert. So like we did the 10 year housing bubble um, anniversary for long. That gave him the ability to go to New York and talk as an expert and not have to be in New York to do the story. So that's why I try to come up with different ideas to allow him to do that uh, or any of my other clients. But for you or for anybody else who might be a part of you know a media push in whether it's Fox or anywhere in LA or anything like that, you want to look for something that's maybe a, a national issue or pertinent to a big or a large market. So for example, in LA right now, as you know very well, I think we talked about this the last time, retail is just insanely dead. Like you walk down Rodeo Drive and you see just empty places and it's almost shocking like wow how is this possible and then recently i saw the number of homeless people in la california overall climbing so these are stories that are pertinent there so if i go ahead you you mentioned before that we need to find we need to find topics or stories that are headliners yeah. and that that's happening now so that we have a better chance of of really being in front of these people. And then I just want to, cause we had a whole bunch of people just jump on right now. We had like over a hundred people just wow. go like that. Um, let me show them the end of that video really yeah. quick. Sure. And tell me if you can see it now. I can see it. All right, here we go. Again, here very soon. So what would you say is the thing that, that, a, that a potential homeowner should keep in mind if by some chance down the road a bank wants to try to, you know, help you buy a home that really you can't afford, right? Yes, so just be more responsible and, and make sure that you have the right down payment. Also take a look at to see if you can afford it or not. Because back during those days, um, you might qualify for the loan, but you can't afford the loan. That's a big difference. Mm -hmm. So underwriting guideline now uh, is making sure they have the, the appropriate down payment and sustainable home ownership is probably the theme that all banks and lenders are trying to do now. Mm -hmm. All right, long down. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Yeah, Thank we you. appreciate it. Thank you. And That's super sweet, dude. That was so, I, I can't believe you were on CBS. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> I, I'm glad they got your name right, too. That was pretty Yeah, good. that's yeah. right. <laughs> yes. And, and Tristan, so if you, you know, being in Southern California, you can take a page just off of what Long did there and approach LA bookers and, you know, what, whatever it might be and talk about the trends that you're seeing in California, especially in the new year. That, you know, these kinds of anniversaries or new year outlook are always really good. What are you seeing in retail? Now the homeless situation is bad. Those are stories that you could easily pitch or of course I can help you, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can help me pitch those. Uh, yes, I can. I, I will do that any way, any day, any way to help you. But my point is, is that anybody like you, not to give you competition, could pitch that easily to talk about, you know, I mean, even the fires that happened in California. These are things that everybody continues to talk about in the media. And you can latch on to those stories very well by giving your own specific idea or perspective in a certain community. Maybe it's Malibu. How's Malibu doing? I mean, I don't know. I'm sitting in Austin, Texas, but you would know. And if you could pull financials or any, you know, numbers from um, real estate transactions in those areas, or maybe rentals, given the fact that I'm sure so many people had to rent after their homes were destroyed. Sorry, I was muted because uh, the Amazon guy was doorbelling on me. <laughs> But uh, that's true. So what other pieces did you work on for, for Mike and Long? Because that's part of what you're teaching in this course that we have. I just pinned it to the very top for those of you guys that are watching. Yeah. Uh, just in case you do, you're wondering what the course is about. What other things are you teaching that you did with Long and Mike? So really it's about positioning. What story angle do they want to facilitate more media coverage for themselves? Um, I remember one of the calls that we had, we talked about retirement homes and retirement facilities, uh, like very nice retirement facilities. Mike was mentioning he had a, a client that was coming in um, and they were building these types of properties. I don't know if we've lost him or not, hopefully not. Can you still hear me? I think we're still live on yep. Facebook, but yep, I'll keep, okay. 
And so, you know, Long, tell me a little bit about um, the different specific, and this is kind of the coaching that I do with my clients, and I do talk about in the course. Tell me a little bit about the specific goals you would have in getting a story out there in the ne next month or so. You said you had some big stuff that you want to launch. Yes, yeah, so, so for us, you know, the spring's coming up. So if we were talking about right now, we would tell people why you shouldn't wait till the spring to list your home, because now you compete with a bunch of other inventory. So those are, that, that would be a topic that we would talk about. You would share with me, well, this is the right time now to call the people up. You know, it's cold out right now, but best time to list your home because you wait till the spring, you could be competing with 30 other listings in your neighborhood. And I remember when we were talking too, we were talking about the interest rates and of course how they affect housing and purchasing and selling. And at the time you said, you know, people didn't really understand that we were at the lowest interest rate ever and so all these stories about oh interest rates are soaring it's like this is the lowest that it's been in decades and people need to keep that in perspective and not let that hold them back do you find that that's still the case or what is the situation with interest yeah because in that uh, specific episode we talked about why people shouldn't wait on the sideline because the only thing's going to happen is the rate's going to go back up the house price is going to keep uh, going up so they their affordability will change so they can buy less home for it uh, mm -hmm. but now yeah it, it's you know, without going to politics, I think uh, everybody is, is, uh, is predicting that rates are going to stay low this year and maybe even 2021, 20, despite who's going to be in office. So, yeah, it's going to be really good for, our, for us for the next couple of years. And that's a good story that I would pitch anywhere in USA. So Long and Mike could pitch that in Minneapolis. Um, anybody could pitch that because everybody's talking about, okay, now we've got the impeachment hearings. What's the decision going to be? Is it going to affect the market? The market's been doing so well. How are interest rates? So you can always tie real estate into those trending stories, like what's happening in my city now that everybody's focused on politics. Whether it, And you don't have to get political. That's the other thing I want to point out. A lot of people um, will say, well, I don't want to touch politics because I don't want anybody to know which way I'm leaning because it could be divisive for me. You don't have to, to ever say which way you're leaning, but you use it for your own story trend. Like it, it's a fact, there are impeachment hearings right now. It's a fact that the market is doing well. It's a fact that some people are predicting that it will go up and then go down. So you can just base your information off the facts that are out there without having to feel like you have to go one way or another or be seen politically um, specific. Yeah, that's a perfect example because the impeachment going on right now is on the top of mind. How do you tie that to real estate and you and your market to yes. get on TV to talk about it? Exactly. Yes. I pinned the video. That's what I was doing. I pinned your video to the, to, uh, not to the top, but to lab coats right now. Just in case you guys want to watch it, you can see how Long did really well on, on CBS about a year and a half ago now, maybe a few months ago, a year and a few months ago. And I also, Christine, I pinned the links to your course at the top. This way, for those of people that are tuning in or ones that have missed it, they can go to the top and then just watch that there. But anything that you guys want to add here uh, that I may have missed or questions that you did want me to ask you, Christine? Well, first I'll point out um, on the one page that I think you pinned, I haven't seen which one, but probably um, there's a free ebook there that gives you kind of a checklist of the different ways to approach media and what is a really good story. Um, I always try to, you know, round it out by telling people you want to either have an educational story, something that's emotionally grabbing for a viewer. Every time you think, is this a news story? Is this something that anybody's gonna care about? Think about your own patterns. What stops you in your tracks? If you're walking through the room and Fox News is on in the background and it's just blah, 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 blah. Is there something specific that would stand out for you that you might stop and listen? Those are the kinds of stories that you want to push out there and make somebody care about. And it's always either grabbing somebody's heart, making them laugh, being controversial or educating. So that really is, at the end of the day, how to define a good story, whether it's Forbes, entrepreneur, real estate, Inman, whatever it might be, you know, ABC in your local town. Those are the elements of good news stories. That's, that's such a great way to end it uh, because a lot of the times we, we're always asking, well, how do, I, how do I make more content for social media? And just even what you just said there, that's exactly what to do. I mean... I'll give you an example. Today in the morning, we had in our in our little world of lab code agents here, we had somebody 
post up about a camera, say, hey, should I use a personal camera for some of the uh, uh, listings that I have? And then some people were super mean to the guy, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's like, no, get a, get a professional photographer. You're an idiot. I'm like, there's no, <laughs> there's no room for that. So I just made a post on Lapcoats saying, hey, uh, look, there's no room to, to be mean here. So just be kind. Show yourself out if you're going to be an asshole. Mm -hmm. And it pulled everybody's strings. And now it's got like a thousand likes in a matter of like three hours and i'm like it these are the things that grab people's attention right so yeah. you're so right about that and i think we forget about that i even forget sometimes so yeah that, that makes a lot of sense long what have you seen man yeah i to totally agree because you have to be genuine too right whoever you are you can't i can't go out and pretend to be tristan I, you know it, it won't be genuine so it has to be who i am what my market is it has to resonate with my our, our audience so for sure and uh, the last thing I'd like to ask, if that's, I don't know if Christine have enough time for, do we have enough time for one more question, Tristan? Oh yeah, dude, we have plenty of time. Well, you know, you know, there's two types of people we talk about to do it yourself and to do it for me. Why would someone want to use you instead of try to do it themselves? What's the big difference? Well, it's just about basically getting A to Z without having to learn the tr tricks of the trade. So uh, for example, I, I heard a speaker talk, I don't know, a couple of years ago, and it really changed the way I run my own business. It's like, if you can have somebody basically do something for you and deliver the results that you need, and you don't have to use, think about your own time per hour. So how much is your time per hour worth? If you can spend, you know, a week or so, or even a month, depending on, you know, all of this is contained in the course, so you can do it at your own pace. But if you can spend a week or so and learn it yourself and think, okay, I got this, I can do it, and I've got all the tricks, and I'm going to go for it, that's great. And that's what's, what it's built for. But if you have the money, imagine how much you could use your time for going and recruiting new clients or new homes or whatever it might be, and then have somebody else do that for you. The other thing I, I know I told you, Tr uh, Tristan, and Long as well, and I tell this to all my clients, um, usually in the entrepreneurial world or, or people who are you know, running businesses like yours, um, you don't need me long term. You need me for three or four months, maybe six months if you want, and I'm not trying to talk myself out of business, but I always say, do what Long and Mike did. They used me for, I think, three, maybe six months. I can't remember. Of course, we've been connecting and, and working together since then, so I'm grateful for that um, just in, in our relationship and our, our networking. But you were able to use those pieces and push them out on your own social media after. Nobody checks the date on your social media after, uh, after a story. So, for example, if you run a Facebook ad tomorrow with yourself on CBS and there's a link to that story, now it's the anniversary of the housing bubble. Yes, that's timely. It would work right now because we're at the 2020 year mark. Um, unless there's Christmas tree in the background, nobody's going to know what your normal story is specifically. It's just about credibility. So I always tell people, you know, you, if you can afford it, do it for three or four months. It's much easier because you could be going and building your business than having to learn how to do your own PR. It's, um, I used to work with Ryan Dice, or work for Ryan Dice, a digital marketer, and I did all of their PR for a while after I left TV. And he would always use the example of like how he had this conversation with his dentist. He came in and he was, you know, getting his teeth cleaned. There was a new dentist and the guy's like, oh my God, you're, you're Ryan Dice with digital marketer. I've taken your, <laughs> and he's like, yeah. And he goes, I really felt worried. Why is my de dentist trying to get on digital marketing? I want him improving his dental skills from my teeth. I don't, you know, any doctor, you want them to be a pro in their own area, not learning digital marketing, have somebody else do that for you. So if it's cost effective, hire somebody to do it, do it short term and then come back to it if you can. But if you can learn it on your own, great, that's good. But Imagine how much you're worth per hour and how much that's going to take. Something that, now I will say, I really feel like, especially with direct contacts that I'm going to provide, it shortcuts it a lot. You don't have to watch a ton of YouTube videos. I am putting it all together for you and making it easy. But if you don't have the time, just hire somebody. It doesn't have to be me. Of course, I would love it. But my point is, is that, you know, make sure it's worth it. I love it. All right. For those of you tuning in then, remember, it's Christine Haas, and you can just find her online. You can just Google it. But if not, 
you can always find the pin post at the top. And if you need to refer any business to Long, Long, you're out of Minnesota. That's right, right baby. <laughs> okay. I got a snowmobile. Right. Mike just got a new snowmobile, I think, so we can send them out to, you know, <laughs> new showings. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. Good. Thanks. Thanks for being on again, Christine. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. And now what I think we should do is we should get Long and Mike on and I'm going to come up with some story idea in the next 30 days and then we'll come back and revisit it and see what we did. I love that. Why don't we do that in about 30 to 45 days? That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah we should do it. Cool. Are you game Long? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Long's good. always game. He, he flew to New York to be on CBS. Yeah. Come on. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being on. Okay, talk to you later. Bye-bye.